Hello everybody, welcome back. It's Judicious Fire, and I am here with Dove Keeper. Dove Keeper has always been one of my favorite heroes of all time. Uh, I picked her as the number one attacker in Castle Clash. Uh, she is not what I would call a suitable defender against a human attacker, but she certainly makes it up for it in terms of striking ability in any attack scenario. Uh, I am looking at a 10 Vigorous Fury Dove Keeper. Uh, let's take a look at some of her attributes, stats, and qualities. Skill 13, 10 Vigorous Fury coming in at 170% health boost. Uh, crit rate up by 90 as long as she keeps 45% of her health. Uh, Rudolph. Yeah, Rudolph is going to be a great pet for her. Dispels conditions, gives her that heal that she needs so well. Running a Stealth 9, uh, when she drops below 30% health, she's going to get a big attack boost and go into elusivity for 4.5 seconds out of 9, leaving 4.5 seconds of cooldown time. Uh, what I have enchantment-wise, uh, I am going with a Forest Ward. Uh, Forest Ward for the same reason I went with Forest Ward on Zephyrica. When I use my Zeph and Dove in my particular style of play, uh, typically they are my point persons out there on the board. They're the ones that get hit with all the stuns, comas, fears, paralyzation. Uh, they get wrapped up in Cosmoprox. Uh, they get completely shut down. It's during those times that Healing Ritual would be doing nothing. Uh, they have to be actively attacking with basic attack. Not even an auto proc would count. So that limitation, uh, I hesitate to put uh, Healing Ritual on. It's a great enchantment, not knocking it. I'm saying that as choice number two, uh, I would pick Forest Ward as choice number one. So uh, we have the... Uh, Limitation of when they are being attacked. Well, they're always being attacked. The moment you drop them out on the board in any attack scenario, they're going to get attacked. So it's always functioning. Dispelling conditions. And that 50% to operate, it's like a wink-wink 50%. It's more like 85% of the time. Uh, or more, more so almost every time uh, that that 8 seconds elapses. So huge health gain. Uh, in terms of health boost uh, in a heal and also a dispel. Uh, and my personal favorite part of this, look at that dove. Uh, that dove is coming in at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight traits at five, uh, coming out with, uh, and just take a look at those two uh, superior traits in contrast to the other traits that are at five. A trade at 5, normal, 975, extra accuracy. A superior trade at 5, 2930. It's three times what a regular trade is. Oh my gosh. Uh, bringing us to 16,382 accuracy. Rest is all basic stuff from upgrades, upgrading process. Take a look at that crit ability. She's at 1,000 crit. Take a look at her skins. The bonuses in crit from both of her skins is uh, 520. Half of her crit ability is attributed simply to the skins. A uh, huge boost in crit if you can get the skins. Uh, it's another reason I went with Vigorous Fury. Uh, her crit isn't high enough to justify a brute force. It would be too far in between uh, those big, heavy, crushing blows from brute force. I would much rather hit far more often in battle, uh, be far more confident that she's going to be getting repeated crit strikes than hit every once in a while for uh, greater damage. Uh, and the way this game is, there's only two heroes that are in any way difficult, and that's Zeph and Dove. Everybody else is killed immediately. So having extra damage... Having an unholy pact, having, you know, e even the brute force that I just mentioned would be useless. Uh, it's always going to be damage cap damage against F and Dove. So the only two heroes I ever have got to worry about are the ones that can't die because they got a damage cap. So I want to try to give my heroes as much accuracy as possible so they hit more often in combat. 
And if I'm going to give them an attack related talent as I have with Dove, let it be something that raises their critical ability. At least they'll be able to trigger crit far more often in battle. I would much rather have a little bit all the time than uh, a whole bunch every once in a while. Um, I, I've gotten the question on the channel uh, a couple of times uh, when it comes to dodge and when it comes to uh, accuracy. Uh, I think that there is a some misinformation about dodge and accuracy, really all of the traits in, in Castle Clash, because they don't explain anything in this game. Uh, you can go way beyond 100% of uh, a particular attribute. Absolutely. And going over 100% with a particular attribute is a good thing. So if I have 120% dodge, it doesn't stop at 100 and I just lose the extra 20%. I'm getting the full 120% dodge bonus. Now, why would I want to dodge 120% of the time? Well, if my opponent has 110% accuracy, that means that I will still have a dodge advantage. The reason I want to have 160% accuracy is because already I am now facing enemies that have a dodge rate of 130 percent 140 percent that's 13 14 thousand dodge so we take the accuracy and we deduct the dodge got 150 percent accuracy rate your opponent has 130 percent dodge 150 minus 130 giving you only a 20 percent chance to hit your opponent so the days of not missing with 160% accuracy or 16,000 accuracy, those days are already over. I, I had four days of that. Okay. And then on day five, uh, people started putting uh, stacking dodge into the 12, 13, 14 thousands. Uh, I think 15,000 is easily doable on a high dodge hero. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm going to bump into a whole bunch of Zephs and Doves and things like that that are all dodged out, even Wallace and not hit, or hit very infrequently. But if I don't stack accuracy like this, I won't hit it all ever. So there is a great advantage to stacking an attribute well beyond 100% uh, because accuracy and dodge counteract one another. Dodge is deducted from the accuracy, leaving you with your percentage chance to hit. Uh, so happy with the 160%. But by no means is it enough. If they, if they let me take it up to 250, I'd take it to 250. That's what you need. Uh, so there's going to be misses, but uh, only against those who have stacked their dodge in every available trait slot, superiors included. Uh, so I went with that Vigorous Fury, and uh, I can pair it up with so many different things. Uh, the Brute Force, I can, unholy, I can do anything that Dove can do. Uh, in that other uh, slot. Uh, let's give her, her a couple of uh, tries. I'll roll her through, uh, uh, what's it called, Blitz Gauntlet. I got that $5 uh, accolade pack maybe like 10 days ago or something. It's a little accolade pack. I thought, you know, that's, that's neat. What is that? Something new. First day I logged in, and this has been running for like two days on iOS. First day I logged in, I was allowed to use my accolades and use this quick upgrade button. It jumped me up to like level 42, 43. And I was able to claim all of this stuff all the way down the line. It was unbelievable. So you ever see one of those accolade packs coming up, get one of those because you're going to get get everything. Uh Without any fuss or muss, you don't even have to play this thing in game mode. Well, either way. Um, and I just got one more collect on the last skin. I'll do a video on the last skin. It's uh, going to be uh, fully upgraded in about a day, a uh, day or two. All right, everybody, let's get into Blitz action. Let's see what we got. Uh, we'll just take on anybody that comes up. Okay, what we got? Oh, JJ Tropicana. 
All right. JJ Trapicana, one of the top players here on iOS. All right. Now, uh, Dove is on the left. Uh, Zeph is on the right. Both of them have uh, 16,000 plus accuracy or 160% chance to hit. And uh, we're going to still see misses every once in a while if the opponent has really, really stacked dodge. Uh, and you'd have to fill nearly, I would say, almost every trade slot. Maybe you could get away with leaving one that's not dodge, but uh, you really got to gotta work it out. Okay, is that Walla up there? Who am I hitting down here? I see a little bit of miss every once in a while. Who is that in there? I can see Drogo Pet. Is that a cultist? Looks like a cultist. It's probably got the all dodge everywhere. And you can see what these two heroes are. I mean, it's this is uh said this in another video. We've got the all these uh, tiers in Castle Clash, seven different tiers of heroes. Tier one's the premier hero, tier tier seven is a hero that you never use and don't need. And you know, tier one is is Zeph and Dove, and tier two is everybody else. To, who just go out in different varying stages of one shot in this. That's it. So and if you have a base damaging pet of some kind, uh, you can 100 percent every base. I just don't want to do base damage. I'm just old curmudgeon about that kind of stuff. You know, we want to take out heroes. So we've got uh, one hero out. I'm gonna drop some supporters. Okay, as soon as I drop those supporters in there, we went to seventy-eight and two, eighty-three and two. 83 and 3. See the difference that some support in terms of debuff, buff, silence, heal, reduce heal. Uh, what a big difference it makes. Eh, let's try Dove right up against F. Oof. You see lower right hand corner. Laz getting hit. Oof. Laz just got taken out. Laz comes back. Never been a big fan of revive Laz's. Revive Laz uh, comes right back to life. And the moment he comes back to life, what was ever killing him, kills him again. So, uh, you want your lads to live, get a Sacred Light Survival Lads. It's going to live three times as long as a lads that comes back from the dead and has three lives. Also, keep in mind with Revive, Revive is exactly like self-destruct. Your hero has absolutely no talent until your hero is dead. Do you want the trigger or operation for your talent to be the death of your hero? Wouldn't it be better to create heroes that don't die? Okay, we are now bringing in the buffers. And you see, folks start dropping. It will leave Zeph and Dove. And that's it. Lava will go out in a matter of seconds. Lava used, lava used to be the uh, used to be the top dog. Used to be the number one golfer. Used to wear the green jacket, but he is now the caddy.
He carries Zeph's golf clubs. He provides Dove Keeper with cold water. And with Zeph and Dove, neither one of them will die. They're both invulnerable. Uh, so we are just looking for a little bit of base damage, but it's just going to take too long. Let's just skip it and go on. Oh, we got Dove there right at the end. Okay, close enough. Uh, let's see here. Let's do, uh, oh, let's back out. Let's change insignias. And uh, let's run one with a couple with brute force, and let's see how much damage we can accumulate. All right, here we are. Okay, so just Dovey. Just Dove. All right. Any damage that's caused is going to be her. There was a million one. Well, 2.7. 3 point something. There was a 4 million. Well, okay, he's gone. Okay, so she went up through about, you know, on average about 70 million on that guy in a matter of a couple of seconds. Psh, brutal. Really rough. Okay, we got the brute force on there. Let's do uh, a quick uh, attack against heroes. Let's run an HBM AJ using a dove, and then we'll call it a day. Come on. Come on, give me that gauntlet. Give me that blitz. Come on, friend. Ever. All right, what we got? A whole bunch of bad guys all over the place. Uh, who do we want to attack? I want to attack Dove. We bring Zeph in on the other side. Okay, let's just watch the heroes disappear. There goes Kaz. There goes Laz. There goes Ashura. Watch Lava. No damage, no damage, and then boom. All this damage. He snapped out of it with a quick heal, but it's not going to keep him alive for long. Looks like we're hitting, we're hitting with Zeph for about, uh, I think, 184 crit damage. 184,000 on average. And we're hitting with Dove. It's tough to tell. I think we got about a 400,000 strike in there. Dove has variable damage. Zeph is always going to be doing the same uh, crit strike damage. Uh, whereas Dove, you know, hers is going to vary. Okay, let's do this. We're going to take our Zephy, and we're going to stick him right there. This is not my HBM AJ base. My HBM AJ base. I jump around between two different devices. Uh, I play Castle Clash on an iPad, and I always have. I need a larger screen. I can't look at this phone and, and play a game like this. It's too many small things, you know? I go to sell that crappy one-hour work hammer, all of a sudden I sold my fame. All right, I, I, my figure's too big uh, and the screen's too small. So I play on an iPad, uh, but I cannot record uh, or do any of this that we're seeing on an iPad without it being in a very different aspect ratio than what uh, anyone, anyone on YouTube would want to see. Uh, so I have to use my telephone when I'm making these kinds of videos. Uh, and what that does is it immediately resets. When I jump between devices, it immediately resets. You know, my save settings, it unlocks my traits and my heroes. I, I don't go around with unlock traits and heroes, okay? It's does that the moment I log in with another device for whatever reason. Um, so here we go. We've got, yeah, the point was I don't, I've got base setups, but none of them are saved on this phone. This is the only base I have. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'll stick them all in the corner. Let's just see how, how, how it rolls. 
Uh, let's do some AJs. It's been a while since I checked in on AJ. Uh, 360 uh, squad, uh, and she's been known by many names. I know her as the queen of HBM. And she is sitting rightfully upon her throne. Uh, she has done a fantastic job uh, these last couple of months of hammering away at HBM AJ. And every one of those tenths of a second have been hard earned. Uh, so 360 Squad doing a fantastic job at the top of the iOS leaderboard. And we see a lot of familiar names in this uh, particular group. My goodness, we got a bunch of a whole bunch of Endgame members, a whole bunch of our guild members are in there. Oh my gosh, and dealy do. Look at this. A whole bunch of familiar names. A lot of Warden Slayers in here. A lot of Archdemon experts in here. Make me smile. Oh my gosh. What a crew. What a team down there. Okay. Uh, let's see how we do. Let's just roll it. See our friend Dove. Uh, we have the Empower on Dove uh, for one reason only uh what she's doing right now she is sending her love doves out at the enemy we need that to blockade the enemy so all our buildings don't get smashed and we need a uninterrupted attack on the enemy dove keepers from doves love doves that's not going to happen unless she is under direct attack by the enemy so we put the empower on her so she can throw those doves out anywhere on the board. Okay, where are we? We still have everybody down there. Who did I lose? Did I lose Ripper. I think I lost Ripper. Look at this, it's just stuck. It's just paused. I don't know what they're doing. What they're doing with this, with all of our, all of our server space. Oh, it's sending it to CC2. All right, let's do this. One more round, I'll probably lose these buildings with a big skelly proc in a matter of just a few seconds. That first wave of skelly procs will probably take out those last buildings. But that won't be a fault of Dove. Yeah, I died. Uh, I'll run it one more time and then we're out. Let me make quick adjustment. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get some troops. Yeah, give me those troops. What? Uh, let's try... Stick Ripper on the inside. That's fine. Uh, where can I stick it? Right there. That's good. And let's make sure we will, our wall doesn't get that, get killed. This is not my base for this, so I'm going to stick them in the center. Heck with it. I got no walls to protect these friends. Okay, and that leaves one, two. Where's Nubbins? Put Nubbins down where he, where he was, and then let's run that AJ, and then call it a day. Oh, get me in there. Okay. Now, hopefully, see, this is this is why I don't win an HBMAJ ever. It, four seconds goes by before the bad guys even come out on the board. This is a broken clock. This is a broken system. I've been inquiring for two months now. Uh, with uh, IgG about the clock system, the countdown clocks in HBMAJ, and email after email. 
They've explained it to me. I'm not going to get into it all. I know the explanation. It's just... Oh, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. I'm going to keep, keep being a thorn in their side until they finally come to some realization that the clock is an absolute brutal mess and needs to be set on a different metric. Look at this. All right, AJ3, baby. Nice. Okay, we need to silence those skellies on AJ4, or we're going to be able to, not going to be able to do it. We can't lose bases. We can't lose buildings here on AJ4. Come on, silence those skellies. Get me up to AJ5. Come on now, friend. Silence those skellies. We need you, Dovey. Those bad guys couldn't have brocked in a worse position. Right there next to those buildings. Okay, we've got one, two patches of buildings left. Mm. <laughs> this could go either way. Come on. Look at this. Come on, Dove. Hold back the, the enemy Dove. Hold back those Levanicas. Yeah, I'll run it on fast. Just so we can go out with a win. If 360 Squad's watching this, she's probably laughing at me. She's saying, you noob. <laughs> Look at you. No, no wonder. No wonder you're in fifth place. <laughs> well, it's not like I'm using Paladin. Look at this. AJ2. 30 seconds have gone by and when, only at, only after 27 seconds have gone by do the enemies even come out into the board. Okay, you're telling me there's not an anomaly? I was told today there, there are no anomalies that exist. No anomalies. My gosh, no anomalies. You get 50 seconds on this thing and it gives you credit for a minute and five. <laughs> you you got to get 38 seconds beat time. You got to beat this thing in 38 seconds in order to get a, a score of 50. <laughs> this What? What make any sense? Oh, we go out with a win. All right, good. I maintain some dignity. Uh, so we got a dove here at uh, 16,000 accuracy, and it's well worth it, especially in today's high dodge game. Uh, I would probably go with uh, anybody you want to do damage. And you want to be a striker and attacker, I would go with accuracy. Uh, putting, it's only my opinion, only my opinion. Putting dodge on dove, putting dodge on zef, that's like, that's like building a rubber jackhammer, okay? <laughs> it's going to look like a jackhammer, but when you try to use it, it's not going to be effective. So let your hero be what it is supposed to be identify that one thing that it does best and try to make that one thing even better a dove kills people okay zeph uh food processes the enemy extra accuracy means even those dodgy dodgersons are going to get dropped into the food press uh, processor and turned into uh salsa so uh accuracy is very very good in today's game to counteract that dodge I uh, hope you're enjoying your clash and everybody, and I will check you on the next video, and thanks for watching. All right, bye-bye.